It turns out that software became one of the major defining problems of the system. With nobody clear on exactly what the computer should do, the software engineers were free to write almost anything they liked. At least, at first. There were no specs. We made it up. Um, and it's always amazing to me, why was I allowed to program something that hadn't even been specified that would be critical in assuring the success of the whole Apollo program? I couldn't believe it. But it, that's the way it was. We made it up as we went along. The lack of specifications led to a proliferation of software routines at a time when programs were agonizingly laborious. Each program was written by hand and turned into punched cards a computer could read. If you submitted a job during the daytime, it was likely to be hours before your output would appear on the table outside the computer room. We could stand there and watch it and wait for it to come out as a line printer output that was maybe an eighth of an inch thick. If you screwed up, you got an output that was maybe two feet thick. But the real problem was not the glut of paper. It was memory. The computer simply didn't have much. The overall memory for the Apollo guidance computer program was equivalent to 72K uh, uh, kilobytes, 72 kilobytes of uh, memory in modern terms. Today, a $100 MP3 player has 50,000 times more storage space. Furthermore, the computer disks that stored the programs were fragile and unreliable. The solution today seems extraordinary. It was called rope memory. You actually had to send the program to a factory and women in the factory would literally weave the software into this core rope memory. We call it the LOL method, the little old lady method of uh, wiring these, <laughs> these cores. Not a very nice, t today you couldn't say that. <laughs> say that. <laughs> Computer code consists of ones and zeros. In this case, it was a physical distinction. Margaret Hamilton was one of the very few female engineers on the project. The rope is made up of rings and wires. And if the wire goes through the core, it represents a one, and around the core, it represents a zero. It was extremely slow. One program could take several months to weave, and if there was an error, it was a nightmare to correct. The software program was falling dangerously behind schedule. Everybody was running behind. We weren't the only ones. But it became more and more uh, nerve-wracking to Houston to see uh, what are those MIT guys up to? Are they going to pull this off? 